Hello and welcome to the gluten-free side of my channel where we make gourmet tasting cakes using a box mix. And today we are making a gluten-free strawberry cake. So stick around while we make something boxed but better. The first thing we are going to do is prepare two 8-inch round cake pans. You can buy a special gluten-free spray to spray your pans with, however I'm going to show another alternative. I have greased my pan with some regular canola oil spray, and now I am lining it with parchment paper. I cut one 8 inch round circle to fit in the bottom, and then two strips of parchment paper to stick to my sides. The canola oil will help it to stick like a natural glue. For my second strip of parchment paper, I sprayed where it will overlap with the first parchment paper to help hold it down. After your cake bakes, the parchment paper peels off so easily. This technique works really well. Repeat the same process with the other 8 inch round pan, and then set them to the side while we make our gluten-free strawberry cake batter. In a large mixing bowl, we are going to add one gluten-free yellow cake mix, two tablespoons of strawberry gelatin mix, four large eggs, one and one third cup of strawberry puree. You can use fresh or frozen strawberries. I did frozen and I just thawed them out and pureed them in my blender. The last thing we are going to add is a half cup of oil. Now we are going to mix this up for about two minutes until well incorporated. Your batter will be a little thick for this recipe. This is exactly what we want. This cake comes out really nice and moist. My taste tester said that it almost tasted like a regular gluten-full cake instead of a gluten-free cake. That really made me proud. Pour your batter into your pre-lined 8-inch round pans. And now it is time to bake them at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. For the strawberry icing, you will need one stick of room temperature unsalted butter, one third cup of pureed strawberries, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Lightly mix your butter into your strawberry mixture. It doesn't have to be fully incorporated, just enough to break down the butter so that when you add the powdered sugar, it will incorporate a lot more easily and smoothly. Add one and a half pounds of powdered sugar and then mix until well incorporated. And as usual, don't forget to scrape down the sides of your bowl as needed to make sure that all of the powdered sugar and ingredients mix together evenly. Now when it comes to butter-based icings, they can be affected by the weather, especially if it is hot or humid outside. I'm checking the consistency of my icing because I noticed it was a little thicker than the last time I made it. The last time when I was experimenting, it was a very warm, humid day. Today it's a little cold, and I can see it's a little stiff, so I'm going to add an extra teaspoon of milk. I know a teaspoon may not seem like much, but it can create a very big difference and make your icing experience a lot more enjoyable. After I'm done, I scrape down the sides of my bowl and then gently lay some plastic wrap over the top. This will keep the icing from drying while we wait for our cakes to cool. It has been 35 minutes and our cakes are done. There are two ways to check to make sure they are done. The first is the poke test. Simply poke with your finger and if it does not leave an indent, it is done. The other is the toothpick test. Insert a toothpick and if it comes out clean, you know your cake is done. Now we will let it cool. This part is optional, but I would like to decorate the top of my strawberry cake with fresh strawberries. However, when working with fresh fruits, they will dry out unless you do something to preserve them. There are different preserving methods you can use, but the basic point is that you just need to coat your fruit in something so that it will lock in the moisture and they won't dry out. Since I had strawberry gelatin on hand that I was using in my cake, I decided to use the leftover gelatin to make a jello mix. I dissolved one tablespoon of gelatin mix into three tablespoons of boiled water. Then I dipped my strawberries into them and refrigerated them for about an hour. This gives a perfect coating and also a nice little shine to the strawberries. Now it is time to fill and stack our cake layers. Simply peel off your parchment paper. Told you it would come off easily, didn't I? And now we are going to build a dam. That's right, a dam. We are going to make one out of icing. I'm using this piping bag with a star tip. You could just use one with a regular hole, it doesn't matter. And I'm going around the outer circle of the cake, leaving about a quarter inch gap between the complete outer edge of the cake. This is because I would like to cut off the edges after stacking them to smooth off the sides before decorating. After I've made my little icing jam, I'm going to now add my strawberry jam. 
Put several spoonfuls on top of your layer and then using the back of your spoon, smooth it out to the edges of your icing. Next, I am putting some fresh strawberry slices on top of the jam. When you have finished, put on your second layer and refrigerate for about 10 to 20 minutes to help the icing to firm up. This helps make it easier to ice afterwards. After letting your icing firm up in the refrigerator, it is time to shave off the edges of the cake. Once again, this step is optional. It just helps to ice your cake a lot more smoothly and give it a professional look. Using a bread knife, shave just the very outer edges of your cake, going in a straight downward motion to make sure that the sides are even. You don't want to go too far in or else your round cake will suddenly not be so round. And you don't have to waste those pieces either. I highly recommend snacking on them. They are delicious. Once we have finished straightening up our sides, it is time to move on to the crumb coat. The crumb coat is exactly what it sounds like. It is a thin layer of icing used to catch the crumbs before giving your cake its final layer of icing. If you are a beginner, it helps to put about a half cup of strawberry icing in a separate bowl and add another half teaspoon of milk and mix it in. This will help to thin out your icing and make using it for a crumb coat a lot easier to work with. After you finish your crumb coat, place your cake in the refrigerator for another 10 to 20 minutes to let the icing firm up. Then we can do our final layer of icing. Now it is time to ice our cake. Get a generous dollop of icing on your butter knife or decorator spatula and spread it onto your cake by holding your knife or spatula at a 45 degree angle. This will help to push the icing across the cake instead of dragging it and will prevent crumbs from happening. You'll notice I'm turning this cake a lot in order to ice it more easily. They actually sell cake decorating turntables at local craft stores and other various places. However, I'm not using one because I want to show that you can do this even if you don't have all the fancy equipment. It may take a little more effort, but it is completely doable with nothing more than just a butter knife. After my cake is covered with icing, I go around the sides one time to just help smooth it out. And then I flatten down the outer edges by pulling it into the top of my cake and smoothing it out. I am going to use the hot water technique to give a more smooth finish to my cake. This is optional. I soak my butter knife for just a few seconds and then tap it dry but not completely dry it so that the hot water can help to smooth out the icing. I'm just going over very gently, I'm not bearing down hard at all. If you notice that your icing is starting to stick to your knife, dip it again and repeat the same process. As I said before, this technique is optional. I just know that there are a few people who really love that smooth cake look, and with butter-based icings, it is a little trickier to achieve. Don't get caught up in the perfection, or you'll lose the enjoyment of the process. For this cake, I'm going with a simple shell border. Using a star tip and a piping bag, I am going to squeeze and let the pressure build up until the shell gets big, and then slowly release my pressure as I pull down to then thin it out at the tip. Then go behind the one that I just did and repeat the same exact process. And there you have it, our delicious gluten-free strawberry cake. Thank you for joining me. I had a wonderful time and I hope you did too. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section below and I will do my best to answer them. And I will see you next time on Boxed But Better with Jenna. Oh no, my egg is stuck. Oh, I think it's stuck. Ah, it's stuck. Oh no. Ah. Ah. Eh, look what it did.